Well, the tool room was founded uh, in a shed outside my parents' house. That's why it's called the tool. That's why it's called tool room. Basically, it was a shed. I kid you not. It was no bigger than this room, um, and we used to keep the lawnmower in there, the, all the, the garden tools, and I cleaned it all out at one point and I put my decks in there back in the day. Hi, I'm Mark Knight, uh, I make records, I DJ records all around the world, I run a record label called Torn Records, and I'm the best dad you've ever met. How did I first get involved with electronic music? Well, it was actually here in Ibiza, to be honest. This was my very first touch point. I came to the island uh, in 1989, purely by chance, um, with the lads. It was the first ever lads holiday, I was 16 and we came here and we went to Amnesia. Purely by accident, we went to Bass Paradise and we're like, what the fuck is this? It totally and utterly blew our heads off. It was one of those real cliched Ibiza moments, um, but the seed was very much sown then. I went back home, I was playing a lot of football at the time, so football was my career, so partying wasn't really on the, on the agenda and, and DJing wasn't even a thing at that stage of the game. Um, so I kind of, carried on with my love of, of, of boogie and soul and funk, but always just touched a little bit on house music, but came back here, here again in 1991, I think it was, and then the, the marriage began, and that was it, the rest is history, really. But Ibiza very much has a massive part to play in that. Well, the first gig I ever did was in a bar on a Tuesday night in Maidstone called Gabriel's. Um, and I truly believe that's where you learn your craft. You know, when you play in that kind of environment where it's a Tuesday night and there's five people in front of you and you play one wrong record, they're just gonna go. Listen, when you play to 5,000 people, they're not going anywhere. They've all paid big money, they're gonna stay. But that's how you really learn the art of DJing, um, is to be put in those environments and think about every single record, the whole story that you're telling, uh, the way that you cur curate the whole night and not make any mistakes. So I did that for a long, long time. Um, I guess one of the first shows I ever did really that was of scale um, was Garage City in London. Um, I played there at Bar Rumba on Saturday nights and that was the kind of first entry point to the next level of my career. Yeah, I've got some incredible memories of the early years of the scene in the UK. I, I truly believe, and I stand by this, the sort of period between 94 and 96, in my opinion, was the golden era of house music. You know, we come out of the fields uh, and the, the warehouses and things have become a little bit more sophisticated. You saw brands start to emerge um, in established nightclubs. The environments were really conducive for the experience, great sound systems, lights, the drugs were brilliant, the people were brilliant, and it was just magic. And I think if there was one night that really kind of personified all of what was great in, the, in electronic music in the UK was ruling the Ministry of Sound, it was just next level. You know, when you look back at these iconic nights like the Paradise Garage or Studio 54, and when you're in it, you, you don't know you're living through such an iconic phase of, of music or club culture. But I really even felt when we went to, to rule in, it was like, this is special. This is very, very special. Um, it was one of those situations you'd queue up on a Saturday night, and even though you went every week, this was pre-mobile phones, pre-social media. So this really was your portal, your hub to meeting other people within club culture, and it was a community. Um, and that's what made it special. You went each week, and the people from all over the country went, and that was if you could get in. You'd go every week, and some weeks they'd be like, no, not tonight, and it broke your heart. But that's what made it extra special. Um, and we were listening to the incredible sounds of Tony Humphries and CJ McIntosh and Louis Vega. It was very much modelled on the bay, on the Paradise Garage. Incredible sound system in, in, uh, in the Ministry of Sound. It used to finish at 10 a.m. on Saturday, and it was magic. It was truly the thing that really kind of reinforced my love for, for house music. I guess it's got to be happiness, that's the whole point of this thing, you know, you've got to come here to enjoy yourself, but like I said earlier, I like to do things with soul, you know, it's a bit of an unquantifiable entity, uh, saying the word, it's got soul, you know, it's a, it's a feeling, 
Um, and you either feel it or you don't, you know, either resonates with you and connects with you, but that's what I try to emanate in my music and my sets, you know, something that, it could be eight hours of sort of more techy beats, but it really, you come away feeling that you've been washed with a little bit of soul, so that's what I try to convey with what I do. I think that's, that's the component that moves you, you know, music you should feel as much as you should hear, you know, and does I say, it's, it's what you bring that has that element, and if you bring it in the right way, then it, it, it turns it into something very special. That's difficult because I kind of move within a fairly broad parameter of, of, of sound. You know, it's all intrinsically linked, but you know, I, I would say in my soul, most my soulful end, probably the record I made with Beverly Knight and the London Community Gospel Choir, I think it's going to be all right. I guess that really epitomizes what I do from you know my roots, the soul, you know, working with the gospel choir and Beverly. Um, and then if you wanted to talk about my most sort of club focused thing, it would probably be Downpipe, the record I made with Underworld. Um, you know, when I produced albums for Underworld and stuff with them. And then I guess, you know, to come between that and the two in the middle, um, I made so many, talk about just straight club records. Maybe Into My Life, the record I made, that's just a very easy club record that you can just play, you know, without overthinking, it just fits and works in your DJ set. So I'd like to think that I couldn't define my sound in one record because that's my USP, is to be able to move between there and there, and it all makes sense. Well, the Tool Room was founded uh, in a shed outside my parents' house. That's why it's called the tool, that's why it's called Tool Room. Basically, it was a shed, I kid you not, it was no bigger than this room. Um, and we used to keep the lawnmower in there, the, all the, the garden tools, and I cleaned it all out at one point, and I put my decks in there back in the day, and then I moved out, and then I wanted to start a label. I'd been releasing music on other people's label, and I thought, do you know what, I can do this better myself. And, I really feel that I will be in control of my own destiny if I own the process, then I've only got myself um, to hold accountable. So I wanted to create an environment to release my own music and I sold my house at the time, I moved back to my parents and I said to my mum and dad, I want to build a studio in the tool room. And I built a studio out there, all the money I, I got from the sale of the house was ploughed into building the studio and I said I wanted to start a record label and call it Tool Room because it has a soul, it has a, it has a meaning and uh, and initially it was myself, my brother and my dad that ran the label, um, and it still is. I mean, my dad's now 80, and he, he comes in two or three times a week. I mean, mainly to get away from my mum, but um, he still comes in, and all the guys in the office love him, the kids love him, he's, he's amazing. He's the only 80-year-old who knows pretty much everything about Tech House, but he's so cool. Um, so it was a family affair, it was always built on that model. We have a stay and tour and family. And that's not just a kind of slogan, it's, it's really part of our DNA and it's where we come from. So a very organic thing that, that grew initially as a, an outlet for my own music that just snowballed into something that, that represented my own music and, and, and the extension of that and what I believed in and what, and what I, I, I like. I guess the, the, the sound um, of the label has evolved, but we've always tried to maintain its original mantra. You know, that's, that's key. Um, to any successful label. For example, let's say you put the radio on and you heard a record and you said, oh wow, that sounds very Motown. Even to the lay person that couldn't define why it made, why it sounded Motown, but the continuity in, in sound and production quality um, and, and musicianship creates a story. Um, and that's what we try to do with Tour Room. You know, people write records and say, I've made a record, it sounds very Tour Room. To me, that's the ultimate A&R accolade. If that you, you develop a sound, and that's through constant continuity of all of those factors. You know, great production, great hooks, great melodies. Um, we always started off with this, this saying that we, we release records that were get our jail cards. You know, if you're playing a gig and it wasn't quite going right, you put one of our records on it, it would get you out of jail and we've tried to maintain that. Yes, we have a, 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 a relatively broad parameter in which we exist in terms of music, but again, that's all underpinned by, by quality and, and, and continuity and, uh, and a sound, you know. We, we never let um, our foot off the gas. We don't try to chase trends. We're never about that. We realise that we are about one thing, and that may not be in vogue at any one moment in time, but that's okay, and that's good, and that's a good thing for music, because 
You know, it wouldn't be great if Oasis were number one forever and ever. It's great that music moves in circles, um, but if you stick to what you believe in and you do it with integrity um, and you do it from the heart, then you will always have your moment. And that's the kind of ethos we try to maintain in the label. <laughs>